What is up? I'm here. Today we're going to be building the IKEA lack enclosure. So after this video, this space is going to be filled with this guy and some lack tables that we have put together. Stay tuned. Welcome back to George's Gadgets, everybody. I am George. I apologize for the hiatus. I recently moved, as you can see. This background will be ever evolving while I try to figure out what works and what doesn't. And I'm going to be figuring out how to utilize this new room completely set up just for 3D printing. Today, I have all the parts that you need to assemble your very own IKEA-like enclosure. And I have already done two of them for my other printers. And today I'm going to be doing the final one with you guys for the Mark III. Um, first, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be replacing the old extruder with the new one that Prusa released in his recent update. I did it on my Mark II and it's been working flawlessly with it. So we're going to do that for the Mark III as well. And after that, then we're going to be assembling the LAC tables that will be housing this printer right next to me for all of my videos. So, uh, let's start doing that. These are the parts that you guys are going to be using to replace your extruder. And this is the old fan cover that I'm taking off and the fan itself. I started removing different parts in different orders and realized that I should have just followed the directions, but it worked for me. I have a different uh, optical cover because I use the mosaic palette and that's why there's a little knob on there. But make sure that you remove this screw before you try to remove your sensor. I fumbled with it for a while before figuring that out. <laughs> All right, so I struggled for a while trying to figure out how to remove the extruder. And what you do is actually get two screwdrivers and you put one at the top and you put one from the back, but you have to have it attached to the, the X carriage. It makes it easier to remove that way. And this is the old part. We need to make sure that we remove all the screws from it. There's that one and little square ones that are hidden inside those slots. So I used a couple different techniques. Um, a lot of them didn't work, <laughs> but you, what I ended up doing is just getting a screw. But I just wanted to show you guys how much I actually messed up on this <laughs> because it's kind of comical. Yeah, that's not going to work, George. It's not a good idea either. Man, I feel like such an idiot sometimes. I don't know if anyone struggles with this, but I always like to have a ruler handy anytime I'm messing with something so that I can measure the screws to actually make sure I'm using the right one. Because the, the Prusa printer, it's, it uses a bunch of different ones. So finally I'm getting everything back together with my bald head in the way. And I just followed the directions on how to assemble the extruder on the website. They've already updated it and added in the new parts. So this is the Noctua fan. I updated the Mark II extruder so that you can have the same kind of setup where it has the Dyson induction cooling. And what's interesting is I actually cracked my fan because I put it on wrong. And I just wanted to let people know, you gotta be a little careful with these guys, they're delicate. I over tightened it and it cracked. Now I'm adding on the last bit, uh, the little fan stand, making sure that it has the correct angle pointed at the part. All right, now that that is all done and 
we'll get to the next part. So we still have to do the power supply and the heat bed cover, but we'll take care of the light table first, and then we will get to that after we set all this up. So let's start working on our IKEA light tables. All right, so we got to get started here, and these are all the different parts that you are going to need. These are your clips so that you can hold the wires in place, uh, the bottom pieces, the top pieces, your power supply replacement support and the heat bed. Uh, this is where you're going to put that power supply replacement. You're going to remove that and replace it with the new one. Those are your door handles, your hinges, your power supply holder, a spool holder, I used a different one, I didn't use the one that came with it. Your Wagyu adapters, so you don't have to solder. Those aren't necessary. Your DIY LED lights and your wood screws. Uh, brackets to hold the second table together. And that's basically it, except your IKEA tables. Also magnets, I forgot to add that in. So we're gonna get started, we're gonna open up this table and these are how you're gonna place the parts on. You make sure that the hinges are facing forward. I use this sticker as like a front facing type of marker, but you can use whatever you want. When you're attaching the first set of legs, you wanna make sure that that hole is facing up because it's going to be used to screw into other parts and you're gonna to have to drill pilot holes so that you can attach it. All right, so we're gonna be using the two inch screws. Uh, I got these from Taylor's, and then these are the hinges that are gonna help hold the acrylic pieces. You wanna put those hinges on first before you screw down, obviously, because you won't be able to after it's attached. I found that using a hand screw, or a hand screwdriver was better in some spots than a power drill, um, and that's just my preference. But after making the other two, Sometimes the power drill had too much torque and it kind of wrenched on it. So we're drilling pilot holes now and it's time for this piece to meet its maker. All right, uh, adding the LED lights, I wanted to make like a square box. And so I was just measuring out, I believe it's 100 millimeters um, in from each side and then that was like basically my area where I wanted to be inside of. The LED lights that I purchased are 95% CRI and so the color is as correct as it could be for LED lights. They're a little more pricey but I think they're worth it. Now I need to attach these to the Prusa power supply and those are the cables that I'm going to use doing it. I had a bunch of leftover screws from my bracket pack that I purchased. All this stuff's gonna be linked down below and that's what I'm using to attach the clips. I did this because I didn't wanna have to make a bunch of adapters and solder um, for the lights. So I just kinda like looped them in there and it's held together that way. These adapters aren't necessary though because if you solder the wire directly, it will be attached to your enclosure and so when you try to lift it up, it's not gonna work. Now we just have to attach the legs using our 3 fourths inch screws for us American people. I don't know why we're not on the metric system. I mean, everyone else is. These are your acrylic pieces that I got from Printed Solid. I bought three different packs of these and they're 60 bucks pre-cut. Um, I think they look nice. They feel extremely sturdy. I've, you know, smashed them a couple times and they're holding up fine. All right, so now we just got to throw in all the different pieces. I used PLA to print out all my parts. I didn't use PETG, which is what the guide actually tells you to use. Um, I feel like PLA was fine. The only thing is, is that sometimes the parts don't slide in correct and you have to use a little mallet uh, to hammer it in to get it in nice. 
I also ended up using a heat gun to melt some of these so that it would fit right. So you're throwing in all these pieces and you're doing this because once you add in the parts here, it's gonna hold them in place. And there's my mount that I was talking about. See, so it holds everything in and you wanna make sure that it's all nice and square before you finally decide to pull the trigger and drill them down tight. This is my George's Gadgets patented way of putting together IKEA lac tables. It's the only way it could be done. And if you use it, you owe me a lot of money. They actually are kind of a pain putting together and it gets tiring after three of them. So these are the different pieces that you're gonna to need to attach to that. You want this notch in the back left. Yeah, and that's where the power supply sits and the cables get funneled up through there. You just drill the pilot holes uh, so that you can screw them in. And I used the three fourths screws for this. And that's it, fully assembled IKEA lac table. And that's it, that's the video, we're done. Just kidding. Now we have to remove the old heat, heat bed cover and add in the new one. You have to bend the wires a little bit, but they can take it, so I wouldn't worry. I felt a little nervous when I was having to do that, but it, it was fine. This is so that the they don't hit the back of the enclosure when it's in there. Now, after you've removed the power supply, and I didn't go through that because it's kind of self-explanatory, you add this onto it. And you know, I guess all of this is self-explanatory. I guess I should have included it. Whatever, I didn't. We're done. Now you attach your power supply to the enclosure so that it sits outside. And if you watch the video and you read the guide, this is because these power supplies were not meant to take the kind of heat that the enclosure is going to generate and it will shorten the life of it. You drill a hole in the top so that you can funnel your filament through and then that's it. This is the moment of truth and it all works. <laughs> all right, so that is it. Uh, we have assembled not only the Prusa new extruder, but we've also assembled the IKEA LAC enclosure uh, that's on their website. So um, I missed a couple things because my camera woman uh, forgot to hit the record button. So I'm gonna just show you guys those real quick. But basically I miss talking about the grommet that you glue in so that you can avoid having little wood particles come in as you are feeding in your filament. And then also I purchased some metal brackets. I could have 3D printed them, but I decided not to. I just decided to purchase them from Amazon and they come with uh, the required amount of screws, which I also use to attach the little wire adapt or wire holders, wire clips to the, the top of the enclosure. Overall, what are my thoughts of it? I think after assembling three of these separately, it's not exactly what you expect. It's a lot more rickety than I imagined, and IKEA lac tables are, some of them are less solid, some of them don't hold the screws as well. Maybe it's the type of screws I used for the, for the money that you put into it. They're super cheap, and it definitely clears up like a lot of room in my, in my room now so that I, I have more room to do other things. I guess it really depends on, on what you want. If, if I would recommend it, it would just be your budget, really. Printed Solid offers, uh, and I'm not endorsed by anybody or sponsored or anything, but there's a lot of really good enclosure options out there. They may be more expensive, you may run into different issues with them, but uh, if you want a DIY feel, if you want something that you can do yourself, which is what I enjoy, I like assembling things, so following steps and putting stuff together is a lot of fun for me then I, I think this is totally something that's up your alley. It definitely gets the job done, and the, you know, the heat difference is there. I don't really print in ABS a whole lot. I still only print in PLA. The real reason I, I, the real reason I wanted these is because I wanted to get them off of the 
the table so that I have more room to work on projects while I'm in here, while, and I can be printing. I'm sorry I've been away for so long. I, like I said before, I moved, and so it's been really difficult trying to keep videos up. I've just been enjoying the house. And funny thing is, is I took so long to post, is I found out that I'm moving again in six months. So, there'll be another little break during that time period, somewhere in March. But, thank you guys for tuning in. If I haven't talked to you in a while, please hit me up in the comments below. I'm gonna go back and reply to all the ones that I've missed, because I know I've missed some. Uh, I really appreciate you guys watching, and George's Gadgets is back in action, and I'm gonna be posting more videos. So, I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.